Good afternoon, uh, good morning and good evening everybody. Uh, my name is Kevin May. I'm the uh, co-founder and editor of tnews.com. Welcome to another one of our uh, webinars. Uh, hello to all of you, wherever you are. I'm based in the UK. Uh, we have a, a, a brilliant panel for this, for what we hope will be an absolutely fantastic uh, webinar. It's got the lofty title of Tech Power Tools, Changing the Way We Travel, and I think we've got a really good one for you uh, today. So, like I said, I'm in the UK. We have uh, representatives from uh, Atlanta, Virginia, Los Angeles, and Connecticut. Um, joining me uh, from T News is uh, Gene Quinn. He's my uh, co-founder, and he's the CEO. And uh, for the webinars, he's our very, very glamorous producer. So Gene will be joining us later on. Um, we also have on the panel there to discuss this topic. Uh, we have Brian Beard, who's the executive for Travel Technology and Consulting at Amadeus North America, and obviously many, many thanks to uh, Amadeus for supporting this latest webinar from TNews. We have Rob Webb, who's the Chief Information Officer at Hilton Worldwide. He's in Virginia. And we also have, and this is a first for TNews, and we're really, really pleased that we're doing this today. We have brought someone in from the outside, as it were. So we have Zach Hicks, who's the Group Vice President and Chief Information Officer at Toyota Motor Sales in the USA. The reason why we've got Zach in is that we think there's an awful lot to learn in this particular subject from how another industry is kind of approaching this. So what, you know, the, the, the kind of premise for this, for the next 60 minutes is this. So, you know, in the very, in the very, very near future, we feel that technologies are just changing the travel experience and taking it pretty much to another level. Meaning, as inevitably, the industry will need to be prepared for all these changes ahead, which is why we like talking about these things at TNews and why people like Amadeus are focusing so intently on it. You know, there's ultra high tech ways to check in at airports, there's RFID, there's alternative payment methods. This is future travel tech, which is probably not that far away. It is really around the corner. So the impact of these kind of technologies is never straightforward. It would be a much more dull job for us at TNews if it was straightforward. We like writing about disruption and things like that. So, but you know, TNews and Amadeus is very proud to put on this webinar this afternoon to try and you know, tackle some of these issues, highlight the opportunities and the pitfalls and the challenges that you as travel businesses are going to have. So as always, we will be inserting a number of polls uh, throughout uh, the uh, the webinar today. Um, many of you that have listened in before will know exactly how this works, but it's pretty much a question and then there's a multiple choice answer. So here's a little teaser for you all just so that we can get a sense of where you are. So very simple, where are you located? Are you North America, Europe, Middle East, Africa, Asia Pacific, or Central and South America? And if you can uh, please vote. That's great, all those uh, votes are coming in. Just to say, it's brilliant, over 500 of you registered this afternoon, so incredibly well attended. Thank you very much. If you'd just like to throw those results up. So, almost exactly two-thirds of you are from North America. Uh, just over a quarter of you, uh, Europe, Middle East and Africa. 4%, uh, not surprising, from Asia Pacific. It's uh, very late into the evening there. And 3% of you from Central and South America. So thank you very much for voting. Uh, advance the next slide. And just to let you all know, as always, we are recording the entire operation here today. Uh, we will put the entire video up uh, on TNews within the next 12 to 24 hours, and that includes the slides as well. So please don't worry if you miss some of the uh, information on the slides and the debate that will run at the end. Obviously, the last 10 to 15 minutes, we devote to a Q&A. As always, you can send in your questions to our panel by using the little module on the box uh, on the right-hand side titled Questions. It's very simple. You just send me a question, and we'll try and get as many of those uh, posed to the panel at the end. So without further ado, I'm going to hand over now to Brian Beard, who I said is the Executive uh, Travel Technology and Consulting at Amadeus North America. And he's going to be working with uh, Rob Webb, as I said earlier, again, he's the Chief Information Officer at Hilton Worldwide. And they're going to take us through uh, the first 20 to 25 minutes. So uh, Brian and Rob, over to you. Uh, good afternoon, Brian. Uh, thank you, Kevin. And uh, once again, it's a pleasure to be talking with, with everybody today. And um, th this this topic, and I, I'm glad they um, we we set this up because it's one of the topics that are near and dear to my heart. And and of course, some of you who know me on the phone know that I can kind of go a little bit detailed and futuristic, but that is not the intent today. Kev Kevin, why don't we go to the next slide and I could talk a little bit about the context. The the context of of what we're talking about today is 
is, is a report that was actually um, co-authored between Amadeus and, and the Futures Company, and it really titled Chaos to Collaboration. And really hits a, on a number of different things, but it really sets the tone for there's a lot of frustration and stress with, with travelers, you know, today and going into the future, and how is the industry and multiple industries, you know, going to look at look at you know, traveler stress and frustration. Also, um, there's a huge demand for better information, deeper personalized experiences. We'll talk a little bit about that as well. And, and really all centers around transformative technologies and the fact that I think companies must collaborate even better than they do today, you know, on a whole new dimension to be able to turn this industry into where we all know it can go. And it, what, what the key point here is that we're, we're not just going to go way off on the deep end and talk about flying cars and supersonic low earth orbit travel and tourism. We're going to stay grounded and we're going to talk about real technologies and social trends that will really affect the future of the travel industry over the next 10 years and beyond. And, and for me, it, it's, it's, you know, as, as a prior CIO, and I know the rest of the guys on the phone as CIOs, it's interesting. The technologies that we implement in our organizations have generally been around for 10 or 15 years. And by the time they reach a maturity that they're actually useful, it is really, is really important. And you don't want to go off and start talking about things that aren't going to be here for 30 or 40 years. So, Kevin, let's go to the next slide. I know it's a little bit of a, um, an eye chart, but it really touches on some, some key points, especially around traveler frustrations and expectations. And, and the report that everybody will have access to, I believe, on the, the T-News website, you know, touches on a number of different components. And I'll be focusing, and Rob and I will be focusing on a number of these today, and automa uh, automated identity is one of them, which we'll touch a little bit more deeper in future slides. You know, we won't touch on the intelligent tickets and mobile health and some other stuff today. We're going to save that one for a future webinar, but if you have questions about it, please feel free. Intelligent recommendations, we'll touch about that, and that, that is the how you get better information for making travel choices. And we'll touch on, on payment with memory, and this is something that touches everybody from information about travel to expense reporting to just payment mechanism, which I believe has to change in this industry. It's really interesting. I'm not going to go over the slide, but if you scan through it, you can see that the frustrations on some really key issues are out there. If, if there are 40 or 50 percent of travelers have frustrations, it's something that we need to look on, look at. And now, hey, Rob, um, I know from, from the, the Hilton side, you have some really interesting perspectives on this. Do you want to give your um, two cents on this one? Sure, Brian. I mean, I think the Amadeus report uh, with the futures company is really spot on the mark with respect to the trends that are uh, impacting travelers today. Uh, you know, we have over 38 million Hilton Honors members, and uh, the increased uh, information that we have about those uh, Honors guests, their identity-related information as it relates to their preferences when they stay at our hotels is very, very key. But we all know as we travel around the, the world that uh, it's becoming uh, increasingly complicated, uh, and travelers really require greater simplicity, greater end-to-end -end, uh, integrated experience uh, when they travel. And a lot of these uh, technologies and uh, capabilities uh, that are in the market, that are emerging in the marketplace, are really helping us better serve our traveling guests. And we're seeing, you know, on, on several fronts, we're seeing guests wanting uh, greater personalization. We're seeing guests want greater connectivity when they're in our properties and, and greater access to the properties enabled by you know, some of the, the payment technology and, and access technology that exists. So we're, we're seeing these trends and we'll you know, dive into a few of them. Yeah, and I, and I want to build on a point that Rob just made. I and mean, this is definitely, we're looking at it from a, a global perspective on this. And obviously the CIOs that are on the phone are also global CIOs as well. And it, it's interesting because that if you think about it, and if you look detailed into the study, you'll see that even like like China, you know, by 
2020, over 30% of the world's travelers will come from an Asian company really led by China. And that's a dynamic change from where we are today, which is still the largest market in the world, is North America for travel. But that, that will be changing over the next 10 or 15 years. And, and those, the, the needs, frustrations, and expectations of a world traveler is a little bit different you know, from the east to the west and how we look at that. So, so we have to be aware and be thinking ahead to take advantage of those trends. Um, Kevin, let's, let's go to the next slide. So, so the first area that, that Rob and I will talk about is automatic transit. And really, if you think about it, it, it deals with the automation of the process of going through the lines and the barriers and the queues, as they say in the UK, and, and, and about the checking in with mobile devices, you know, and identity management and the information, you know, and all that goes around it. Now, of course, there are some serious concerns around privacy and how much personal information and people tracking your location, those type of things that are barriers that need to be overcome. But what we're actually seeing is that people are more willing to provide this information on the behalf that, that it makes the, the whole process of travel easier. You know, Rob, I know a check-in process at, at Hilton Hotels and, and other chains and those type of things are, are very important to you guys. Um, can you talk a little bit about that as well? Well, I think you know, what we're seeing is that people want to bypass the line. So if it's the you know, U.S. Global Entry Program where passengers are pre-registered or the Nexus Program for travelers between the U.S. and Canadian border, uh, travelers don't want to wait in line. And uh, they really want things to be uh, smooth in terms of, of passing through. And the same is true when they reach a car rental company or they reach a hotel. They want to bypass the front desk in many cases uh, and have a kiosk-like capability that provides automated uh, distribution of the key card to the room. Or, in fact, we're looking at near-field communications capabilities that are uh, cell phone enabled. Uh, so we're seeing this, and uh, as the former CIO of uh, Equifax, the credit reporting company, uh, I think you know there's a, a fine balance between sharing your private information and the utility that is provided when you you, you provide that information. But I see the you know the the macro trend being that people will provide that information if it's secured. Uh, because it's going to really help with uh, preferencing and speed of travel through the different uh, checkpoints they encounter along the way. Yeah, it, uh, Rob, very well spoken. Um, and also very interesting, and some of, some of these technologies have been around for years. I mean, back when we were both CIOs in, at GE a number of years ago, um, GE was developing, you know, facial recognition software that, that, could, that could identify, you know, thousands of people in, in seconds as walking through airports from a camera and kind of identify those people and check identities and those type of things. And I know that that technology has just moved on from there. And Kevin, I know in the UK, and especially in London, there's more cameras in London, I believe, than anywhere else in the world on street corners and those type of things. And I know it, it's definitely in use. So, so those, those type of technologies have been around, and I see those being adopted more in airports. And obviously, lo like location-based services and instant alerts to your cell phone, whether you're going into a hotel, where you're going to an airport, where you're going on a, you know, waiting for a, a ground transportation, and so on and so forth, these technologies are out there. And anything that could be used to make the, the travel experience better, I think will be, will be experimented with. And the ones that do the best will obviously win in the long term. Yeah, and, Kevin, and, and I think it's really going to be a, a uh, traveler-led uh, activity where the traveler is going to need to control, control their information within their traveler profile. And it's with the traveler's permission that these capabilities will be enabled. That would be my view. Oh, I d definitely agree as well. And, and, and there's things like, you know, 4G adoption, which will be mainstream by predictions in 2016, which will basically increase by twofold to fourfold the speed of broadband, you know, to mobile devices. Those type of things will have huge impacts on automatic transit as well. Uh, Kevin, we, we could probably go on to the next slide. Okay, so uh, thanks very much for that kind of setting the scene and getting into uh, one of the one of the first kind of subject areas. What we thought we would do now is just 
see where some of you are on one of these particular areas. So, um, Jean, if you'd like to just throw up the, uh, the second poll there. So, in the near future, travellers will embrace storing their financial information in their travel profile. Do you, A, strongly agree, somewhat agree, somewhat disagree, or strongly disagree. So once again, in the near future, travellers will embrace storing their financial information in their travel profile. Strongly agree, strong, somewhat agree, somewhat disagree, strongly disagree. Okay, almost all of you have voted. Thank you very much. And I think, Jean, if we can... Uh... So here are the results. Almost six out of ten of you say somewhat agree. In second place, uh, one in five of you are saying somewhat disagree. 16% uh, some strongly agree and just 5% of you strongly disagree. So maybe those 5% will have a different opinion by the time we get to the end of the uh, the end of the, uh, the, the session. So uh, thank you very much everybody for, uh, for voting there and uh, we'll hand back to uh, we'll hand back to Brian. So, so the next concept that, that we we're talking about here is really the payment with memory. And it really is rooted in data and also ease of use. I mean, today it's almost, you know, archaic or antiquated the way that a majority of companies do expense reporting, you know, handle financial, and even travelers getting access to previous trips and what did I spend money on, you know, two years back, three years back. I mean, it, it's very difficult to do, but it's great information, not only for the traveler themselves, but also obviously valuable for the suppliers if they have access to that information, valuable for corporations from a reporting standpoint. And with this whole, you know, emerging of ancillary services and extra, extra fees and services from different suppliers, you know, throughout the industry, you know, th this is something that's on everybody's mind. You know, now technologies, it, technology has been around for many years to be able to do collecting and digital receipts, you know, and, and I actually see a world probably in the next 10 years where as you're on a trip, as soon as your trip starts, from the time you, you do any type of payment or transaction, an immediate digital receipt goes into your email or your phone. I mean, I, I, I don't know, I have, I have an iPhone and there's an application that came out a number of years ago called Bump where you actually bump two hands together and it actually passes contact information between the iPhones. So you, you, all you have to do is kind of bump your hands together, you know, like you're, you're a sports star doing like a little fist pump and all of a sudden information. But I can see something like that being used for electronic receipts where you kind of just bump your hand together with somebody else and all of a sudden your electronic receipt goes right into your iPhone. No waiting, no, no having to search through, you know, your emails is right there. It goes into a separate folder. But I think, I think by making it really practical, I mean, every traveler knows the pain and hassle of coming back from a trip and having, you know, an envelope full of receipts and having to, you know, heaven forbid, uh, tape them to a piece of paper and photocopy them or have your assistant do that. That's all going to go away if it's not already gone away for most companies. So, you know, at Hilton, you know, obviously we're emailing you your statement after you stay at our property. Uh, auto rental companies are doing the same. But I think to the point uh, you raised at the beginning, information will enable this intelligent passenger uh, uh, profile that will attach all of those uh, receipt uh, notifications to a uh, a trip record. So the process really will be completely automated, particularly for corporate travelers, uh, because there's a compliance element to that to ensure that our travelers are adhering to, you know, corporate expense policies uh, and the like. So we're seeing that trend, and particularly, um, you know, demand from the large corporations with respect to automating those processes. Yeah, I mean, it was something that's very um, topical in the news as well is that people are using cash less and less. Uh, you know, I know some of the Asian companies, especially Japan, has, has really adopted the whole, you know, wave your cell phone in front of vending machines and other devices and then you have automatic, you know, your payment and you can make your selection right away. You know, I see these technologies being much more pervasive in the next five to seven years. 
And, and the other the other item you're going to see in properties is this uh, emergence of the location-based services. So all of our Hilton properties are now uh, Wi-Fi enabled with AT&T in the U.S. And one of the reasons we did that is because you auto-authenticate with your phone when you come into one of our properties. But wouldn't it be great if uh, a hotel company could uh, provide a coupon to you for a free drink at the manager's reception or, in fact, alert you if there was excess capacity in the spa uh, or a special in the restaurant and that the hotel knew your preferences with your permission and could offer you you know, what you needed for that stay. That, that, that's what we see in terms of kind of future possibilities emerging here. Yeah, that's, that's pretty cool. Do, hey, Rob, do you ever see the possibility of where you walk into the lobby and you automatically are assigned a number and you can just wave your phone in front of the door for access, or, or do you think that's a little bit too out there? Well, we've already piloted that. So there are actually two models which we have in pilot uh, in our properties. One is where you wave your phone and a, a plastic form factor key is produced through a kiosk. Uh, for people who like the traditional convenient form factor, and also a, uh, a pilot which we have in place where uh, a, a small audible tone is emitted from your cell phone that is unique to your cell phone, and that will open the door to the property, uh, you know, to your room in the property. There are a lot of security privacy concerns around these technologies as well, but, you know, we're piloting them, and we see, again, the uh, automation of the process for those who want to buy by bypass the front desk. Cool. I also did want to thank you because I do stay at Hilton's very, very regularly, and, and that, that electronic receipt, and it comes really quickly, by the way. I mean, generally, right after you check out, I get, get a receipt within, it, within an hour or so. That makes it so much easier to do expense reporting as well. It gives me a good, good record long term as well. Thank you. Um, let's go on to the next, next one, Kevin. Right, so intelligent recommendation. Obviously, the... Um, one of the areas that we're looking very closely is the impact on social and the, the popularity of social and social media and social communication, social networking on, on this industry. And it it's really touches a number of different spots. First of all, you know, in the traveler decision-making process, whether you're a leisure traveler you know, or a business traveler, you know, whether you're, you're looking at information from an internal corporate social network or the larger social network with, you know, with the likes of Facebook and LinkedIn and a number of a plethora of sites that are out there, you know, this information will be much more useful and much more adopted. And in fact, we've seen rapid adoption over the last few years and it's continuing to grow to, to influence traveler behaviors, especially in the buying cycle. But also, during the travel you know, cycle, while the people are on trips, you know, social information is, is gaining much more popularity. This is where I am, who is here, you know, basically looking at, you know, augmented reality and other things as well to make recommendations on where you should go, where you should eat, where you should, where you should, you know, even the, even the concept of the business tourist, you know, comes into this where people are traveling for business but also doing leisure activities. You know, th there's a whole thing that's kind of blurring the way we travel in the future. You know, so there's a lot of a lot of freedom and transparency, but also a lot of concerns. I know, Rob, have you guys looked at this as well? Absolutely, huge focus, uh, and we're investing uh, tens of millions of dollars in not only re-architecting all of our website experiences, but also we've got a team of uh, several hundred uh, social media uh, uh, folks who are across the company, uh, and this is all about making sure that. Uh, uh, there is uh, the right feedback when a guest has an experience positive or negative at one of our properties because today you know it's the it's the court of public opinion but someone you know goes into a property and immediately they can post a positive or negative uh, review on uh, TripAdvisor or comment on a restaurant on Yelp and so many of our guests are are looking at those uh, reviews pre-travel and then when they're during their travel experience. So we think it's really important that that, that becomes a way for our, particularly our best guests to share you know, their great experiences and, us to, and, a, and a listening post for our company to learn from where we miss in meeting customers' expectations. So um, we have to have uh, kind of both elements of it, but very much listening to, to guests uh, and, and making sure we address their needs. Yeah, yeah. The, the other interesting point 
here as well is that you know whether you're a leisure traveler or a business traveler, you know th this has a phenomenal impact on how travel agents do do their job, or you know travel counselors will do their job in the future. You know, I, I don't know, and Gene, I'm going to steal this a little bit from you. Hopefully, we're going to say it at the end, but you know the the folks that are coming into the workforce now, you know their age, they have never been without the internet. You know, as many of us have grew up and we saw the internet evolve and, and all those type of things, but the group that's coming into the workforce now out of college have been with the internet their whole lives. They see things differently, they're connected, they're much more open to using so social networks and social information, and I think the travel agents of the future will have to be seen as a connected expert that, that is connected throughout the whole, you know, travel chain or travel travel cycle, you know, whether it's the purchasing process, which they're heavily involved with now, but it, during the trip process, those agents should know what happens and get alerts when their travelers, you know, things are happening to them, or just be able to make recommendations or be kind of the aggregator of social information to be able to stay connected. So you know, I, I don't know how much if that's impacting you guys, Rob, but, but I see this as impacting the, the way the agents work as well. Absolutely. Um, you know, we're seeing a single guest consume, you know, as much bandwidth as an entire hotel did uh, uh, a couple of years back. So that's the, the next generation of travelers who are always connected, and they're going to want the travel agent to be more of a curator of the experience, uh, leveraging all of that uh, data that exists in the TripAdvisor and Yelp and, and other uh, uh, sites that are out there that can provide reviews and, and guidance. Very good. Kevin, let, let's keep going in the essence of time. So I've got, I've got a few conclusions. I know, Rob, I'm sure you have some as well. But, you know, so I, I think that from providers to this industry, we, we do have time to shape. We don't have a lot of time. Probably the next two or three years is really critical for how we're thinking about where the future is going to go and some of these maturing technologies that, that will be really changed the way that, that travel works and, and the, the traveler experience and, and how we gather data and how we you know, talk, you know, address security concerns. You know, I think travel companies will be able to you know, be able to preempt and shape exactly what they want to do. It's really important though that collaboration between travel companies gets better and more pervasive than before. I don't think this can work if everybody tries to do it themselves. You know, I, I just that, that's a gut feel. You know, and and I, I just I think it's going to have to be with open technologies and the way that we share information, and, and we will. And I think taking advantage of emerging trends, that the companies that do that the best and can stay ahead and see where things are going will actually be the most successful. Rob, you I, I, I I think you uh, you hit it right on the on the spot. Uh, it's about making certain that uh, you're working with trusted uh, partners who can stitch together this open community of capabilities that will exist because it, it's not going to be a one solution, but it's going to be a, uh, a number of different components which are brought together through a travel technology integration uh, framework that enables the kinds of capabilities that we're talking about. But it's moving very, very fast. Uh, faster than you think, and uh, the power is in the in the hands of the guest, the consumer uh, who's traveling, and uh, these capabilities need to be in place if you're a, a large travel company. Yeah, it's it's really interesting. I did a presentation middle of last year where I where I showed a slide where the the pace of technology change from like 1980 to, to the year 2000 was phenomenal and it was accelerating, but the pace of change of technology from the year 2000 to 2010 was almost double that of the previous 20 years. And from 2000 to 10 to 2020 will probably be triple what it was from 2000 to 2010. It's, it's accelerating. It's not getting slower. You know, and, and I think people need to realize that and look forward and think about things like you know, even the keyboards that we type on could be a thing of the past. It might be all voice commands in the future. You know, the, the desktop may be a thing of the past, and every device will be mobile, whether it's going to be a tablet or a smartphone or something else. These are the things that, you know, from looking at it and having time to shape and think about the interfaces and the devices and the location-based services and all the things that are happening right now, you know, I think people need to be a little bit, you know, looking ahead to the next generation to really be able to take advantage of it. And also be thinking about what are the, the strategic points of integration that are required across this framework of services that will evolve. And uh, that's where 
you know, you, you need to be working with technology partners who, who really understand the complexity and can simplify that through making sure the integration points exist. So it's a very fast-moving industry. Yep, well said, Rob. Kevin, I'll turn it back over to you. Okay, thanks, fellas. Um, absolutely brilliant stuff there and, and uh, quite scary food for thought in, in some respects. So um, before we, uh, we get on to the, to the last speaker, we've got another poll which will absolutely set the scene for what you're about to hear. So, uh, Gene, if you can put the poll up. Industries other than travel have embraced new technology more aggressively. Do you strongly agree, somewhat agree, somewhat disagree, strongly disagree? So once again, the question, industries other than travel have embraced new technology more aggressively. If you can uh, cast your votes. Yeah. And I'm seeing these votes come in now, and they are quite interesting, actually. Right, if you show the results there, so <laughs> it's a dead heat for strongly agree and somewhat, uh, sorry about the typo there guys, somewhat agree, uh, just one in five of you somewhat disagree and a lowly 2% of you strongly disagree. Um, so, nice scene setter as I say for our final slot there before we get to the Q&A, quick reminder, uh, we do have a Q&A about 10 minutes to the end, so please, please, please send in your questions, we've got lots coming in. Uh, already, but uh, we'll try and get as many of these asked as possible. And as like I said, we will send the questions to the panelists anyway. If your question doesn't get asked, so. But it's it's really um, really delighted now to introduce uh, Zach Hicks, who's the uh, Group Vice President and Chief Information Officer for Toyota Motor Sales in the USA. Now, uh, Toyota is not a travel company uh, per se, or a travel company as we see it. But we thought. It would be really good to get someone from outside the industry's perspective on where some of the things that uh, uh, Brian and Rob have been talking about so eloquently for the last uh, 20 minutes or so and uh, and just kind of apply it to how the motor industry is tackling these things and then you know more food for thought for questions uh, at the end. So uh, over to you, Zach, and thank you very much for joining us today. No, thanks for having me. I'm, I'm, I'm glad to be here. And uh, I, I really appreciate uh, Robert's and, and Brian's comments earlier. They were right on target, and, and you're going to see right in line with, with the same content that I've uh, kind of provided. just wanted to share with you a little bit about what we're doing here at Toyota. And a little bit more about my background is I spent 10 years working in the travel industry prior to joining uh, Toyota. I worked for United Airlines uh, in, in the technology side. So I've always got my mind kind of focused on how, how technology can evolve most industries. Uh, but as I spend a lot of time on planes and in hotels and rental cars, I do think about how that experience could be made better for the traveler and, and selfishly for myself if we had better technology there. So I thought maybe I could share some of those thoughts as well. Go to the next slide, please. Here's a, a quick shot of actually what's in our products today. So um, both in our, in, our, in our Lexus vehicles and in our Toyota vehicles, we now have more capabilities where we're delivering applications uh, from, this, from your handheld device. Um, that can connect with your in-vehicle experience. And you now have the capabilities to do things like, um, as you look for the closest movie theater on your navigation screen, and then see if there's any tickets available, and then go ahead and purchase those tickets right from uh, your, your front seat of your vehicle, uh, while it's parked, of course. Um, or from your handheld device, being able to, if you've got a, a plug-in vehicle, to while you're sitting in your office or in your in your house, you can use your handheld device, your, your mobile phone, to see how much charge is left. Can I? How far can I get before I need to charge it? And along the way, are there charging stations where I, where I can charge that that vehicle? Um, we've also now got streaming uh, movie. I'm sorry, uh, uh, streaming uh, music from a couple of different providers. We have Open Table, um, and. Uh, there's many more applications that are on the horizon. If you want more, you can see that on, on Toyota.com slash Intune, and you'll see uh, what's what's being provided in our vehicles today. If we go to the next slide, please. Look, I'd like to, I, as I look at vehicle uh, technology, there, there's a couple of different categories that you may or may not be aware of. Uh, one of the first ones is that most people go for uh, a medical phys uh, or a physical about once a year, and that that's important and, and meaningful, but if you're holding a handheld device or holding a steering wheel for 30 minutes a day, we can actually gather a lot of really important information. And that information becomes super meaningful over time as you can monitor people's heartbeats, respiration, blood sugar levels. And we can do that all just by uh, monitoring the steering wheel. And we can aggregate that content and then uh, eventually send that securely to 
uh, your doctor or wherever you decide that you want to have that information sent to. Um, there's also uh, social media showing up in the, in the vehicles. In our newer Lexus models, we have Facebook check-in opportunities. So just with one button, you can, as you pull up to a restaurant or uh, an amusement park, you can click check back in. It'll register that you're at that location, and then your friends will know where to meet you um, if they have access or if they're one of your friends in your network, in your social circle. Uh, in, in the center there, I talk about vehicle interaction. So many more things are going to be from your handheld device, uh, things like if your car needs to be serviced, uh, you can get an alert set to your phone. And then we can also then, if you decide to give access to that information to your, your local dealers, and they can say, hey, uh, Zach, I see that your car needs to be serviced. Come in today. We'll give you 20% off. So that's integrating that, that offline and online experience and also integrating with social media. I mentioned some of the infotainment like iHeartRadio and Bing and uh, um, movie tickets. And then we're also beginning to be giving you that capability to have some uh, augmented reality or location-based advertising as you're driving by. So a couple of examples are as, as you're looking for a restaurant but maybe it's in a building, we can use augmented reality to kind of add arrows and, and point to a building to um, through your navigation screen to let you know specifically where that restaurant is. Um, or you can also, if you do a business with, say, Nordstrom or like Hilton Hotel, and as you're driving by, if you accept those types of push messages, you can then they can send you discount coupons right onto your navigation screen if you decide to activate that that feature. So, much more integration of technology in the vehicles that you're going to be seeing. On the next slide, I'll, I'll just kind of sum it up that you know more importantly, plug-in vehicles people have what's known as range anxiety. They believe that they can drive to work, but will they have enough charge to get all the way back home? And so giving them tools to be able to see where you can plug in, uh, what your range is, and all doing that from a mobile device is becoming more and more important. We can do the remote door unlock. We can heat or cool your car. We can also overlay, and we do in most of our vehicles, give you real-time traffic. And there's nothing stopping us now from when you get into one of our vehicles, a Toyota or a Lexus, and if it's 8 o'clock in the morning and it's a weekday, we can assume that you're probably driving to work. And then we can look ahead to see what your route looks like. And if there's traffic or congestion, we can proactively tell you that, hey, your, your route looks pretty bad this morning. Why don't you take this route? Uh, that capability exists, and, and you'll see that very soon. Uh, car status notification, if you give your car to uh, one of your teenage kids, and if you tell them not to leave a certain area, and they do, we can have the car send you a text or an email to let you know that the car has left that area that you told them not to leave. And that's the same thing with guest driver mode. Uh, we're doing real search now with Bing in our vehicles. You can send your favorite destinations uh, to your car. Uh, we talked about infotainment. And then Wi-Fi is going to be in all of our vehicles. And we're going to be doing things like as one car comes up across a situation, maybe an accident or slowness, we can real time through Wi-Fi start sending back to all the other Toyota or Lexus vehicles in the lineup that there's, there's traffic ahead and you may want to avoid that. So these are some of the, the, the capabilities that we're building into the car. Now, if we go to the next slide, please, Let's talk about why are we doing this. Well, I think it's similar to what you're experiencing in the travel industry, is that we really want to transform our, our customer ownership experience and, and give them new capabilities that simply just didn't exist uh, a few months ago. This also gives us a new way of interacting with our customers that's much more meaningful. Um, in, like Toyota, where we, we uh, sell our, our vehicles to our, our dealership franchises and then they sell them to the, to the customer, this gives us a new way for the customer to interact with that with the dealer um, or with, with the Toyota uh, corporation. Um, it gives us what we call early detection or early resolution. If there's a problem in our, one of our vehicles or a bad experience, we want to know about that real time. And we can start gathering that information either through social media, through the vehicle itself, and other means, and then proactively correct it so no other customers have to have that experience. And it's also giving us uh, new business models uh, in the future. On a couple of slides, real quickly, on the, on the next slide, this is another example of what we're doing. When people, that we have a, the, the Prius vehicle, which is a hybrid, and, but the technology is really changing. In, it. in the old kind of fashion way of looking at a vehicle, we all used to want to go and lift up the, the, the trunk um, or the hood and look inside. And, and on new, more of these more advanced technology vehicles, it's not. You don't, you're not quite sure what you're looking at. So we built this augmented reality to kind of show people when they're looking at a Prius um, what, looks, what, what the car looks like underneath the skin. And they can use a handheld device and walk around the car and see what it looks like. On the next slide, 
uh, we found out that those error lights on the car are sometimes confusing you. You're not really quite sure what the car is trying to tell you. Like a check engine doesn't really tell you very much. But now you can hold up your smart device, an iPhone or an Android, and you can actually then, uh, it'll pop up and give you more details and even play you a video. In, in, in some cases where if you're saying, I don't know how to pair my phone to my car, um, we've got little videos that'll pop up uh, through your handheld device and you can learn right there uh, while you're sitting in your car. Next, next slide, please. So as I look to the application in, in the travel world, uh, there's much of this, the same concept of augmented reality. It already exists. I don't know if you've heard of Yelp Monocle, uh, but this is an example of you can hold up your handheld device, and if you're looking for, say, restaurant recommendations and you're, you're in a different city, as you're walking down the street, you can hold up your phone, and it will overlay information on top of while you're looking through your camera, information about those restaurants, and including uh, the scores on, on how well that people either like that restaurant or didn't like that restaurant. So you've really got much more powerful information in the hands of a consumer as they're walking around. Um, which in many ways is telling you that, that social media, the power of it, it really isn't going to go away. And there's ways to tap into it to help your customers have a much better experience uh, in ways that we haven't been able to do that before. Uh, and that one's called the Yelp Monocle. You can find that on, online. Uh, on the next slide, I talk about here that there's basically everything is connected. Um, in the upper left, I think Brian mentioned that it's very common in Asia to be able to use your um, handheld device to be able to uh, order something from a vending machine without using any cash. Um, the, the center one uh, with the device in, in, the, in the, the belly there, that's uh, an insulin pump that's embedded. But these devices are actually connected to sen sensors all over uh, the world. And so people can monitor their health and, and make changes in re remote diagnostics in, in different ways. You'll see in the upper right that Starbucks has really embraced technology where you had this augmented reality at, during the holiday time. Uh, you could look at a, take a holiday cup or a cup, one of the cups, and then hold up your phone, and then the characters that were on it would jump off and dance around, and you could hear some holiday music. Um, you know, everything's being connected to the smart grid. I've got an example of a, of, of a wine bottle there. Now, if you want to know how good is this wine, you don't have to buy it and take it home to taste it. You can just hold up your smartphone and get hear how other people, what they thought of that wine. So consumers can make much more informed decisions. In the lower left, this is an example of, and this is, this is available today, where you've got connected refrigerators. And as you're taking, um, using, the, using the, the groceries that are in your refrigerator, as you're taking them out, it's scanning. So when you want to know what you can make for dinner that night, you can actually just go online and see what's left in your refrigerator, and then using other websites like Better Homes and Gardens and Epicurean, it'll give you some recommendations on, on what you can make based on those ingredients that are still left in your refrigerator. And if you can tie that to your, your vehicle, then we'll, when you go to the grocery store, we can proactively give you a shopping list of what you might want to buy. And then lastly, uh, about location-based information, I think there's a couple of interesting things that are happening. Uh, this is Coke Freestyle, and this, if, you, if you've not seen these, it actually allows you to get any one of the Coke products, including some of the more uh, newer drinks like the Monster Energy drinks and those things. And it allows you to customize, so if you like a little bit of Sprite and a little bit of Coke, then you can, if that's your combination, if you have an app on your, uh, on your handheld device, as you walk up to one of these devices, it knows who you are and will proactively make your drink just the way you like it. So that's a great example of what personalization is, is being allowed in, with technologies, giving people that unique experience that they want to have wherever they go. And that really applies in the, in the travel industry is we have that opportunity. So as, as you know, people like myself, where I'm spending 30 or 40% of my time on the road, um, but isn't it great if I, if I don't have to go searching for those products that I like, but if, if the hotel or the airline knows that I like and they have those things available to me. Um, and on the, oh, another point I want to mention is that for, for travelers, it's, it's pretty interesting now where websites like uh, Flickr, PhotoStream, or uh, Google Plus are, are, are showing you where uh, tourists are taking, where the most photos are being taken. And you can now look at a map and say, where are all the tourist attractions? Because basically wherever the most photos are being taken are the most popular uh, travel destinations. And so there's new ways of finding out interesting interesting things while you're, while you're traveling or visiting a new city. I think probably the best travel experience I've ever come across um, is, is called KLM Surprise. 
Uh, can't play it on here, but do yourself a favor. Give yourself three minutes and after the end of this webinar and, and go to YouTube and type in KLM Surprise. And it's amazing. And, and what, they've, what KLM did was they wanted to know how they can transform the customer experience while, while customers are traveling on KLM. And what they did was they looked at it. Had anybody checked in using Foursquare or any one of the other social media tools they knew were in the area? They also looked at their social profile. And, and so in cases where they found one woman who was about to take a trip she liked to run, they ran off and they bought her a, you know, a $15 Nike uh, running wristband. And they went and found her in the lobby and they said, you know, thanks for traveling with us today. We have a small gift for you. We know you like to exercise and here maybe this will make your trip more enjoyable. Uh, they have these really heartwarming experiences where they're not spending a lot of money, but they're taking the information that's available for social media and giving their travelers a personal experience and a little gift that really transforms it. And they did this little experiment and they've had several million hits to this website. And, and now the, the brand of KLM is really changing. People see them as this really innovative, caring airline um, just from doing this small experiment by, by leveraging social media. So do yourself a favor, check this one out. And on the next slide. Um, so, I'm, so here I'm just saying, you know, when I see myself standing in line, that, that's not me, but when I'm, when I'm in line stuck at an airport, I always think there's got to be a better way. And, you know, we've all been there where you, you know, end up laying on the floor, you've been you've stuck, you've missed a flight, and you think, here I'm, you know, I, I travel, you know, 100,000 miles with this airline. Somebody should know that I'm here and laying on the floor. <laughs> Somebody at least bring out a pillow if you got one. Um, or what's about waiting when you're going to check in? All other hotels aren't as great as the Hilton. Um, but that experience can be so great. And when, you know, and I have had wonderful experiences when I've traveled with my four-year-old son and I've gotten to uh, an upscale hotel and they've had milk and cookies and they had his name spelt out in sponges in the bathroom. Um, and I just think what an amazing experience and how my son, you know, two years later still talks about that, that hotel experience. Uh, there's, there's ways to really engage your customers in ways you haven't been able to before, and technology can, can provide that. So uh, that's it for me. On the next slide, I believe. Thank you. Okay. Thank you so much. It was it's really interesting to you know see some of the things that uh, uh, you know what Toyota is doing and how you know potentially how these can relate back into you know, those listening in today and can apply some of those you know, obviously those that have cars and things like that but uh, you know there's just an awful lot to learn with all of this but uh, inevitably we've had dozens of questions come in so and just 10 minutes to get through uh, as many as we can so uh, just a word of warning those that have submitted questions apologies if it doesn't get asked but we will send them to the the appropriate panelist as well and uh, we'll make sure that hopefully one of them gets back to you with a with your own with your own answer so uh, first of all um, someone's shuffling around if they can keep still that'd be great but first of all uh, a couple of people have asked this um, uh, it was uh, Don Birch at one point uh, so someone called uh, Nurav uh, Surav Nandi has asked the same kind of thing and it's around this kind of question of you know who pays for all this you know is it does it need to be investment from travel companies or uh, or what I mean and and how do they work out how much that they should be putting into this on top of all the other things that they're spending their precious time and resources doing as well so I suppose this is probably uh, first of all for you Robert so, or, or Brian you know who pays is the, uh, the, the short question there well it, it, this is Rob Webb it depends upon what uh, area of investment we're talking about but from my perspective uh, we don't ask our guests to pay for hot water or uh, air conditioning and things like high-speed internet services are now you know included in the price for the majority of at least the Hilton worldwide focus, focus service brands and that's become an expectation of guests and I think the same is true uh, for some of the other things that we've discussed uh, today um, so you know largely it's going to be an expense that uh, is going to need to be uh, covered by those providing the services if you're providing hotel services or through the distribution channels uh, it's going to need to be you know come out of the operating cost of those uh, distribution channels okay and I, I guess just a, a follow-up on that you, you talked about uh, two pilots the uh, the waving your phone element and this audible tone thing I mean yes you're piloting these what, what would you what does Hilton see as you know 
a successful pilot? Is it kind of adoption by consumers? Is it the fact that it led to some kind of ancillary sale later on, if that's an element included within those services? You know, what's what's the judgment on whether a pilot for some of these kind of I'm not going to say out there technologies, but this new way of doing things, how do you determine its success? Well, it depends, but it's really the success is determined by the voice of the of the customer, right? The guest. And so if the guest says, I want free high-speed internet in your properties and I want it safe and uh, secure, uh, that's something that we, we offer. Um, in the case of the, you know, uh, bypassing check-in, that's an area where, you know, we're experimenting quite candidly because we're not sure. There are still some guests that want to be greeted by a front desk uh, associate uh, at, at the end of a hard day's journey uh, with a warm smile and a, and a warm cookie, right? And we do that in our Doubletree brand. So, so it's, it, it's very selective. And I would say on some of these things that are farther out there, it's piloting, you know, spend a little, learn a lot, and then determine whether it's something that you would scale across a region, a brand, or the entire company. Okay. Um, Bob Dana, I hope I've um, pronounced your surname right there, Bob. Um, and this is a this is pretty much a question for you, Zach, uh, initially. But I would like to get Brian's perspective on this as well. For you know, look with a travel agent hat on momentarily. But uh, Bob asks, um, can you comment on the use of tablet technology at the point of sale, i.e., in, from a motor, from the motor industry's perspective, this would be in the showrooms, I guess. I mean, are, are they being used? What kind of interaction are they getting with uh, customers in showrooms? Yeah, that's a great question. We are definitely uh, moving in that direction, and we've got several pilot tests going on right now. Uh, one of the first ways that we're, we're stepping into it is is to be able to, um, you know, the cars are becoming so complex, and, and customers that are showing up into dealerships today are so well informed, and they've, they've done so much homework. Oftentimes, they know more than the salesperson when they show up. So having the tablet, the tablet right there, giving that information and making it accessible and allowing our, our, our dealers to be able to sit down with our customers and do side-by-side -side comparisons between our vehicles and also the competitors um, really kind of takes out that distrust when you, when you put the information and make it shared. And, and that's a model that we're moving more towards. And then it'll go deeper. Um, we're doing things as you uh, prototyping the capabilities of when you pull your car into the service bay, A, we would like to know that before you show up so we can have your loaner car ready and then help you get out and, and move your your groceries or the car seats or things like that and put it into the loaner car, but then be able to extract from the vehicle uh, any, any problems. So that way we can pre-populate a repair order, see if the customer is comfortable with making those corrections to the vehicle, and then the customer has only spent a couple of minutes in, in uh, that dealership and they're on their way uh, for their day. So we're trying to find ways that we can leverage a mobile and tablet technology to have a much better experience when you go into the dealership to buy the car or when you go in there to have, have it serviced. Okay, and, and Brian, I mean, I, I imagine this is being done already in, in some travel agencies, but, uh, you know, thinking about some of your customers at Amadeus uh, travel agencies and tablets and that kind of interaction we've seen in the past, uh, I think it was uh, uh, Amadeus brand Travelainment that was experimenting with um, with Microsoft uh, Surface tables a few years back. I mean, is that where you see this kind of going? Yeah, absolutely. I mean, tablet technology is key for the evolution, and e even within agents and home-based agents, and those, I mean, having devices that are that are fully capable of of doing anything that you can do today on a, on a fixed-based desktop or a laptop is absolutely key. And not not only that, I mean, I, I would even say the new desktops that are coming out are all being built so they can run on tablet devices as well. I was just at a company out in San Francisco, and, and they have a number of people, you know, and they're rooted right in the middle of the, of the, the travel industry, and they have a, their, their focus is all on, on mobile devices as well. And so this, it's, a, it's very pervasive, and I think you're going to see that, you know, whether it's at airports and reconfiguring airports rather quickly, you know, you can use mobile devices instead of the fixed space, you know, check-in registers and, you know, at the gates and, and, and those type of things. It's all going to be mobile at some point. Yes, and I suppose an interesting point on that, and you know, many of us that have children and observe them using iPads and uh, touch phones, will really begin to understand that the whole you know, this whole concept of web design is going to change as touch becomes more prevalent. I mean, we've seen um, you know companies like uh, Kayak that's you know that's looked at its iPad app and seen how that could be transferred back into the desktop rather than the other way around. I think touch is such a an important element of the way 
general web design and interaction is going. And I, I imagine, Rob, that's probably something that you're trying to think about at Hilton as well. Absolutely. So we're, we're uh, rapidly accelerating our investment in mobile and tablet capabilities. And what's uh, interesting is that the, the channels will still coexist. So, for example, you're still going to have a concierge in the front lobby of a full-service luxury hotel, but you'll also have a lot of the restaurant recommendations or you know, basic wayfinding. Uh, things that used to be in that paper compendium and all the printouts that kind of cluttered a, a hotel room, a lot of that will be online and accessible via uh, mobile and tablet devices. So we have a whole program we're working on called Virtual Concierge, which really takes uh, those capabilities to the next level and, are, and is scalable across properties. Okay, so uh, moving on, a question from uh, Catherine Bohot. Uh, once again, I hope I've pronounced your surname wrong. And there's been a number of questions around this theme. And it's, um, you know, this is actually quite a complicated thing to envisage, you know, impacting on the entire industry. And uh, you know, the stitching together of it is one of the, as is how one of the uh, people here has phrased it, the stitching together of it from a standards perspective is potentially uh, a potential minefield and very, very complicated. You know, I mean, and, you know, Catherine asked specifically, I mean, how do you see accommodating suppliers to ensure the experience from their phone call to the travel agent to arriving home is exceptional? So it's this idea of, you know, there is much more of a, and to use the, the, the phrase that Amadeus uses very often, there's this all idea of the always connected traveller. But the technology to make sure that they are always connected is quite disparate. And does it need some kind of standards involved to make sure that it does all interconnect? Because there are so many organizations involved at varying levels doing different things. So I suppose that's more a question, first of all, for you, Brian. Yeah, let, let me tackle that one because I know Rob will want to answer this as well. But um, the, the answer is yes. And the answer is it's getting much easier to do that. As, as companies migrate away from the older you know, fixed base mainframes and EDI type and fax and, and, you know, those type of things and, you know, even, you know, FTP type, you know, transfer protocols and get, get more into XML based, you know, and, and things where it's really easy to map from one standard to another standard, we're going to see standardizations occur in this industry. We've all been seeing the news about Open Access Group, the Open Travel Alliance, IATA now getting into the fold, and those type of things, and that's great. But what happens, and what I've seen in other industries, is one standard will become more popular. People will start mapping to that standard. There'll be individual proprietary standards, and over the course of the next 10 years, we will emerge with a standard. It's, it's a given, and it will just be an evolutionary process. My only comment would be that it takes longer than you might think for these standards to evolve and that the rapid uh, development of software as a service, cloud-based technologies, you're going to have a lot of these little companies like Kayak and Yelp and uh, a whole bunch of other ones we haven't thought of. And the, I think someone's going to need to figure out how you stitch those together. And I think that's where you know, large travel technology integrators like Amadeus and others can be very, very helpful. And, and yeah, Zach, yeah. I mean, sorry. Nope, I was going to say, I totally agree with Rob. Okay, so, I mean, Zach, that same kind of question, but from uh, the, the, the kind of the motor industry's perspective, has it been through any of this, or does it see the same, does it see the same kind of challenges? Yeah, I think that the whole, you know, every, everybody, as Brian mentioned, has is, is built these legacy systems that now we're struggling with to how do, how do we web enable them or make them more ubiquitous, but the, the great thing about technology is that it's changing so fast, and the new capabilities that we can use, and, and you know, it's, you can much more easily now push out uh, a mobile app to any to iPhones and Android, and uh, be able to back those into your own system. So I think there's easier ways now to connect to your customers, and let's not forget that in the travel industry, people generally have a frequent flyer number or they have their Hilton uh, frequent guest number. And, and then they're willing to download those apps if it's going to give them more services or a better, unique, personalized experience. And I think that's the opportunity. Okay, so we, we have gone a couple of minutes over time. Many thanks to the hundreds of you that are still with us, but we're very conscious of everyone's working day. So uh, one final question. We'll start with you, Zach. And it's, you know, uh, at the beginning, Brian, you, you did say we're not talking about flying cars and things like that. But, you know, let's let's imagine... For a second, that we're sitting here uh, in late March in 2015. I mean, are we going to be having the same kind of 
discussion about these types of things or what are the things that we are going to be discussing if we can you know, dare I say look that far ahead into the future I mean from your perspective Zach what are you what are you expecting to see 2015 to 2018 well, I just think it's it's it definitely moved for me. It's it's about the personalization. It's about having the apps and, or the the experience that I have on my iPhone. Um, that that I can have that in my car or when I go into a hotel. Uh, maybe they know that much about me. So I like Diet Cokes. That those things are maybe that one sitting on the counter for me when I walk in the room. It to me, it's about uh, the customers or the 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 the, um, the generation that's coming up. That Brian mentioned that grew up with the internet. Um, when when we when we survey them. Their personal devices rank higher up than buying an automobile, so they're so important to them. And the reason being is that connectivity, that that personal personalization. So I think we're just going to see more of that uh, over the next few years. Okay, uh, Rob. You know, I I would echo uh, those comments. Uh, I think you're going to have frictionless travel in from a information perspective. Uh, you know, by 2015. So you know, very very smooth flow of your personal information across those different channels uh, and it will be the power will be in the hands of the consumer so I'll be able to say this is my price signal uh, and I'm looking for a luxury property you know with these amenities these attributes from a technology perspective and I'll have you know personal search agents that'll be out there finding me exactly what I want so um, I think the power will definitely shift to the to the traveler. Uh, personal search agents, I do like to hear more about that at some point. And uh, I guess final word then to uh, to you, Brian. I mean, presumably you're going to uh, agree with what uh, Rob and Zach have said. But I mean, where else do you think perhaps this is going? I mean, you you seem to be the resident kind of futurologist expert that we always hear about at Amadeus. Is there anything um, a little bit more on the out there scale that you're expecting? Yeah, I, I can go into a detail on any of these, but I'd really break it down into five categories. I think data and the amount that we collect, the amount that we use to personalize, the amount that suppliers connect and collect and know about you, you know, is all going to get much more pervasive, and that's going to be huge. Devices, you know, we've talked about mobile devices and those things. It's going to continue to evolve, and especially the speech recognition. You know, a lot of people, you know, have started to see this with Siri and other things that that Apple have introduced, but. Think about. I think that in the next ten or fifteen years, you know, keyboards could be a thing of the past. Um, screens, you know, and holographic screens, and having to be able to take smaller devices and project on a, a wall or just without anything is going to be phenomenal. And sensors, and that know where you are at any given time and location basis is going to be huge in the next five to seven years. Okay, thank you very, very much. Um, we've come to the end of uh, another Teenies webinar. Um, I've thoroughly enjoyed this. this is really far too much to think about to uh, to get through in just trying to wrap all this up but one of the things that I will remind you is that if you've uh, if you've missed any of this all this all the uh, uh, the slides uh, will be online at tnews.com in the next 12 to 24 hours plus the video the whole thing including the Q&A those that did ask a question that we didn't have a chance to answer we will get those questions uh, sent to the guys at Amadeus and they will hopefully come back to you uh, very very shortly with a specific answer that's something that we do like to try and do so it only goes for me to say thank you very much to uh, Zach Hicks from Toyota uh, Rob Webb from Hilton and especially to Brian Beard uh, from Amadeus and thank you obviously to Amadeus for supporting this Teenies webinar uh, enjoy the rest of your day everybody if you have much of the day ahead of you and uh, thank you very much for listening I hope you enjoyed it as much as we did. So uh, uh, goodbye, and we will speak to you all uh, again very, very soon. Thanks a lot. Thank you. Bye-bye. Thank you, everyone.